I'm joined now live from the West Bank by Noor Oda, the first female spokesperson for the Palestinian Authority. Not in that role any longer, uh, but coming on and joining us here on GB News. Good evening. Thank you for coming on and joining us. Now, obviously, whatever happened last night at that hospital in Gaza, uh, a lot of people were killed. There's a dispute as to what the number is, but a lot of people were killed. American intelligence, and I accept that Israel is a strong ally of America, but American intelligence suggests that at 6.59, 10 rockets were fired by Hamas from a cemetery quite close to that hospital, and that it was one of those that misfired, not an Israeli rocket. Um, and this is something that the Israelis have pushed very hard today. Do you have any evidence that it was an Israeli rocket? Well, I can tell you that uh, journalists have been uh, trying to uh, get Israel to provide them with uh, anything convincing uh, so that they can adopt its uh, version of the story, which has changed at least three times. A spokesperson for the Israeli prime minister's office initially admitted that there was an Israeli airstrike and that it had targeted what he said were Hamas terrorists and that it had killed uh, several. And then he deleted uh, that uh, post on X. So. And then the story changed again and they accused Hamas and then they accused uh, Islamic Jihad. So it's a bit difficult to take them for their word, especially given the fact that they've well, uh, lied in previous incidents. So whatever, whatever, what, whatever they say, OK, they're fine. Whatever they say, whatever they say, my, my point was, you know, what proof do you have that it was an Israeli rocket that landed? It looks like in a car park, in a car park rather than a direct hit on the hospital. Right. Well, that hospital was housing 3,000 uh, Palestinians, families, mainly women and children and men who had sought refuge in this hospital, which has been, by the way, providing health uh, services to people in Gaza for over 140 years. So it's a it's a place close to everyone's heart. Uh, and the Israelis knew uh, that it was housing uh, uh, civilians because on Saturday, uh, as the uh, um, Church of Canterbury uh, confirmed, the Israelis bombed next to the uh, the hospital. They called up the doctors, told them that was their warning. They needed to leave the premises. And the doctors were very clear that they cannot abandon their patients, that they, those patients would die if they left them or tried to evacuate them. Uh, they, the the pan-Arab uh, uh, networks were live when the airstrike happened. It was one of many. Um, well, look, there are airstrikes. Uh, no, no, that. I, I mean, then, look. I let don't me, dispute. Please, let me finish. I don't, dis I don't dispute. I don't dispute that there are, there are civilians yeah. in Gaza being killed and wounded for one moment. But whatever right. the whatever the historical rights and wrongs of this, and we can go back to 1948 or go back many, many, many years before that, if we chose even to. Even before, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. Whatever the rights and wrongs, whatever the passion on either side of this argument, do you accept that what happened on October the 7th, on that Saturday morning, with the incursion into Israel by Hamas terrorists and the slaughter of 1,300 innocent people was a barbaric and terrible act. Well, first of all, I'm here in my personal capacity and I'm here as an sure. analyst. So my my personal opinion is really entirely irrelevant. The value, really? I would hope, of my interview, yes, because the value of my presence for yep. your viewers and listeners is context, is uh, knowledge of the issues, knowledge of the players, knowledge of the context. That's why I accepted to be your guest. Um, and you had asked me what, what proof there was, and what I was trying to tell yeah. you is that there are several uh, credible human rights organizations on the ground. They are collecting evidence, uh, video and, and photo and, and evidence on the ground. Nobody has been hindered from accessing the site. Uh, nobody has been forbidden from collecting that that evidence, and I have no doubt that there will be uh, uh, enough credible accounts from uh, uh, experts on what happened. But it's important for your viewers to know that in previous incidents where uh, uh, where civilians were killed, uh, and it was shocking, like the killing of Al Jazeera reporter Shirin Abu Akhlia, our colleague and dear friend, 
In the beginning, Israel claimed it was Palestinian fire that killed her. And then they changed that story, and then they changed it yeah. again until they couldn't... No, 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 I, no I understand. I understand that these arguments rage back and forth, and, and, and it goes on all of the time. I was simply asking about what happened on October the 7th with that incursion into Israel. But, I mean, when, when Hamas act and do what they do, are they legitimate representatives of the Palestinian people? Well, no, no one group is a representative of the Palestinian people, just like no one party is a representative of all the British people, right? Uh, this is one group of many in Palestine. They have a following. Um, and we have to explain also to put in context that Hamas is not just a military group, it is also a political group. Yes. It has a social and political agenda. Uh, and those two, uh, to those two flanks of Hamas don't necessarily coordinate or uh, know about each other's work. Uh, so the backing for Hamas would be on that basis, on the ideological uh, agenda that it uh, presented. And quite frankly, the Palestinian people with Western pressure have not been allowed to exercise their right to vote and choose their representatives for many years because the West no. uh, didn't want to try giving Palestine well, 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 chance, the last time every chance at elections again. No, the last time they had an election, Hamas won the election and quite comfortably. No, uh, let me ask so, you. So, so, let so me is ask your you. Argument, is your argument yeah. is your argument that, yeah. that we can only have elections if the right people win? Is that how democracy? No, works? no, no, no. no I'm, look, I'm merely. Practice, so I'm just wondering. I, I'm merely saying that they are seen by us to be, you know, a strong representation of the Palestinian view, rightly or wrongly. A final thought, but the most important thought: we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. We are where we are today. There is a genuine risk of serious escalation and further heavy loss of life in Israel, in Gaza, and goodness knows where else in the region. What would you, in your personal capacity, what would you like to see happen next? Well, I would like uh, world leaders to be smarter, because right now what I see is complacency. What I see is lazy politics. Uh, what I see is a cop-out. Uh, dumping more guns and more munitions um, and clapping and cheering on as more bombs are dropped on 2.3 million people who are caged in an open air prison is not the answer. Um, and we've seen this time and again, we know it doesn't work. You cannot bomb your way into changing people's minds. Uh, the Americans couldn't do it. Uh, others couldn't do it. It just wouldn't work. The core issue here is that an entire nation, the Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza, continue to be denied their right to be free, their right to have a country, a state of their own. And everybody wants to do anything but face that fact. And when the dust settles, when the Americans and the British go home after this war concludes, God knows with what kind of human toll, the Israelis will still have to do with the one inescapable truth, which is that Palestinians are still here and they still want to be free. And the only real uh, and the easiest way for that uh, conflict to end is to sit down and end the occupation, to be more invested in ending that occupation, okay, and firing well, bombs, well, and demonizing an entire I mean, nation, I mean, and calling many would an say, entire people human animals. Many would say that actually they're not occupying Gaza at all. We could argue this forever, but well, no, international, Ode, international but thank you. legal experts would disagree. But thank you.